Hi, Rivki. Hi, Zahama. How are you? Good. Oh my gosh, this is so fun to see you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, my pleasure. Thanks for being here. So basically, I want to tell everyone that we know each other from high school. Um, now I live in Chicago, but grew up in New Jersey. And we went to high school in New York together. Now yeah. you live in New Jersey. And we were on the basketball team together. We were in the Sound of Music <laughs> together. <laughs> we've been through a lot together but knowing you and I know we're all so different now than we were in high school of course but knowing you in high school to me the fact that you're a nutritionist it it's so like on brand for you already Aww. high school you were a very good listener you were already like it was before wellness was a trend you know but you it makes sense that that you're in this profession like I feel like you always kind of like ate healthier and like <laughs> just had like a really calm vibe and listened to different kinds of music. And so to me, finding out you're a nutritionist, I'm like, oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> and same for you. I do think that definitely people have, um, have it in them to be, you know, practitioners that are in the helping field. And sometimes you just want to, um, sometimes you're just waiting to find how you're going to help. And you absolutely fill that role also. Like, how can I help you? What can I do? Let me give you a massage. Like, calm down. I know we have a test. Let's calm down. Let's everybody calm down. That's so <laughs> funny. Like that. So I, I, you know, it's always so fun to see where everybody goes. Totally. Um, and it's like, it's really not shocking to me where our friends have ended up. Like everybody at all. feel like is in the right place, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so the world of nutrition, it's so big and there's so many conversations to have about this. So this is just one conversation that we can have of many, but I just want people to know that like nutrition is just, there's just so much out there. There's so much science out there. There's so much, so many trends out there. So this is really like, I want this conversation to represent you, like your philosophy on nutrition, your thoughts, because um, the main reason I, I wanted to interview you specifically was just the content that I see that you produce on social media and just reading your website. It's so in align with you know, what I do. And so it, I feel like our like food philosophies are so similar. And so that's why I want you to kind of really bring like your spin to, to this conversation. So first, I kind of want you to tell us about your practice. Um, okay, your sure. Um, yeah. So I think that you, you really said that well. Um, there is nothing new in nutrition there is everybody knows something about nutrition and i am i am in the field to tell people what to eat or how to eat and i think that everybody really just wants me to tell them what to eat and how to eat and that's really not my job at all my job is to help others discover what they need to eat and this is called like whole person understanding, which like you said, is so similar to your belief, which is the, you're a whole person, you're a whole it story. You have so many aspects to who you are, your, you know, your experience and your, um, you know, your background has taught you so much about people that just doing acupuncture is like, oh, you know, I do acupuncture, but that's some, you have to understand the whole entire body, mind, body, soul, everything that makes that person tick. And it's the same thing with nutrition. It's not just one size fits all. It's not like, oh, let's, you know, you eat this and everybody else eat the same thing. And then we'll all look the same and feel the same and be the same. And that's, you know, something so similar is just understanding the whole picture. Um, so thank you for valuing that and being in the same. Um... Oh, yeah, I'm in the same boat as you were. I always tell my patients, like if I have 10 people come to me with migraines, they're all getting a different treatment because yeah. they're all a different person and they're having migraines for different reasons and their mm -hmm. background is different. Their constitution is different. So again, like I think a lot with preventative medicine and, you know, it is not one size fits all. And I think with nutrition, a, a lot of the times when there's these like fad diets or fad workouts, they'll show you all this like science, but a lot of the times that science is not, they're not studying women typically, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really like skewed, I think. Um, 
And um, like I was reading an article lately about like the HIIT workouts, like the interval <laughs> training. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, like, these are not meant for women, like, who have, like, biological rhythms to pay attention to, um, just because all of the science there is, like, their studies are for uh, on men and how men's bodies and their biology is different than ours, you know? Yeah, 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 that's definitely something to consider, always, where are you getting your information from? Do they know you? Like, right. do they know anything about you? Or do they know, uh, is the information even coming to you for that? Um, yeah. So let's back up a little bit. Sorry, I didn't even answer the question about <laughs> who I am and where I am. So I, I am in New Jersey still. I kind of I grew up with you here and stayed here. Um, I'm in Fairlawn, based in, in Fairlawn. I'm a brick and mortar office. This is my basement um, <laughs> because I can't be there right now, which is very sad, but I'm excited to go back when the time comes. Um, company, my company name is RB Nutrition because I don't know, why not? Um, Smart. and, <laughs> and I, um, I started in 2017 and I have been seeing, I see one-on-one -on -one clients virtually and in my practice and I practice a whole person approach to health. So understanding nutrition and health on, um, on many factors, not just food, and working with understanding your relationship with food, but also specific diagnoses, including eating disorders and PCOS, which also I know you are treating as well. Um, but in that vein, very mindful of hormonal changes, um, insulin, medical diagnosis, and also um, the, you know, mental picture that has to attribute to nutrition and health. So that's where I am. That's what I do. And I'm not a therapist at all, but <laughs> you're a listener, you know, and I'm a listener. Again, like all of these therapies, whether it's nutrition, acupuncture, massage, whatever it is, you know, you, yeah, you're not like a licensed clinical psychologist, but you're there listening to people and their stories and you're not separating out the stories of that person from their physical body, right? And so right. I feel like with nutrition, uh, that is such like a mental game to me of like loaded history, like family history, oh, yeah. trauma, like they're just the psychology around food and body image, like so, I mean, I'm sure your patients probably say about you that you're like a therapist to them. Yeah, um, they're like, oh, I'm so happy we spoke. I feel so much better. And I'm like, so about dinner. I, yes. like, <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm also glad we spoke. And, yeah. <laughs> you know. what, what made you want to become a nutritionist? That is a good question. Um, and speaking of therapy, I was actually on en route to becoming a therapist and I was majoring in psychology. Um, I was very interested in health psychology and I took a health psychology class. I saw this movie, Super Size Me, uh -huh. in class and I was blown away at how it, it, just the message of the movie um, and how health and psychology are so connected. Um, at the same time, I was like engaged and getting married and I realized I needed to start to cook. And this was like, the combination was like really very profound for me. And I decided that this was very important. And if I'm going to do one thing and do it well, that I would, you know, I would have it be something that would affect, you know, my family and my food and you know we eat all day for the rest of our lives so it was important to me yeah um and for everybody who doesn't know i, I was about to say all of our listeners which are just our moms <laughs> pretty much hi mom um hi, mom. <laughs> i feel like oh i wanted to know you know what what's really the difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist and i i always see like especially in the alternative health world people have all sorts of mm -hmm. like letters behind their names like can you tell us like what what your training is what sure. how how would a person know you know who to go to for what okay good question always the first question i get um a a registered dietitian is someone who's registered by the um, american academy of nutrition um, the Academy of Dietetics, sorry. 
So we have to go through training. Sometimes there's a master of science, sometimes not. You have to do an internship that's 10 to 12 months long. Um, very specific requirement for classes before the internship. You have to apply and get in. It's really hard to get in yeah. to the internship. And then um, after you complete like a trillion bazillion hours, I don't remember how many, of free labor for the world in nutrition, you uh, take a, a very hard test and become a registered dietitian. Anyone who is a dietitian and went through this process will say that they are a dietitian. Anybody who is a, not a dietitian will say they're a nutritionist. Um, now, it doesn't mean that they haven't had any training. It just means that they didn't go through that training. Like, so, like would you say like yeah. dietitians a little bit more like met, like clinical? Very clinical, very research-based. So we refer to it similar to like going to law school where we just read tons and tons and tons of research and try to find the holes in it. Like right. here is a study showing that like, like you just mentioned before, that HIT training is the best training for weight loss or whatever. And we're like, wait a minute, these were mice and- <laughs> They were like, this was like <laughs> funded by, you know, I don't know, some exercise company. And like, they were all male mice and they were running on, I don't know, like, yeah, a, totally. like a hamster wheel. Yeah. So whatever. I mean, that's very, very dramatic. But there are lots of studies about the benefits of nuts being funded by nut companies, right. things like that. Omega threes being funded by avocados. Um, like in Chinese medicine, we have our own like medical nutrition pretty much, and it's mm -hmm. dairy free. Mm -hmm. And like I know everyone in my schooling was so into how like the dairy industry is the one with like behind like the got milk campaigns and about like they're like paying the vitamin D people off. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> So there's a lot of, you know, you really have politics. to weed through it. Absolutely. Like where you, food. Yeah, right. there is politics. Where are you getting your information from? But sometimes the studies just don't have, they're not long-term enough or they don't have enough, you know, or they're, they're, um, I don't know, they're, 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 the way that they did it wasn't, didn't really work well. Or if we try to replicate that kind of study, all of a sudden we're finding holes in it. Um, so a lot of what we do in school is evaluate research, learn about the inside of the body, the science of the body, um, and what things happen when it comes in So with food. So a lot of nutritionists or nutrition training will learn uh, counseling skills or they'll learn the basics of food composition, but we're learning food composition and the body. So I think that's a big difference yeah, right. between the two. Um, but I really went haywire and just learned psychology of food, which is, which is completely another aspect of food, which also a nutritionist may or may not know. Okay. Yeah find out. <laughs> well, can you, okay. So I found this quote on your website that I really liked. I'm going to read it to you. And then I want you to elaborate for us. Okay. So, we believe in a non-diet approach, weight management, and all foods fit nutrition philosophy. So first of all, like I'm emphasizing the non-diet because people are obsessed with diets, but also what is that all foods fit nutrition philosophy? Okay. Good question. Um, all foods do fit unless... <laughs> All foods fit unless you're allergic to them or you don't like them. And otherwise, the body is equipped to be able to handle all foods. And demonizing foods is something that really affects our relationship with ourselves and the food. So similar to in relationships, if we say, I'm never talking to that person again, it takes up energy. You know, we create this like hate field. Um, when you have black and white thinking about food, when you start to think, well, I can't have these things and I can have these things, what we focus on is what we can't have. Right. And to feel really free is to really rid yourself of, of these rules. It's not to say I'll, I'll always eat the foods I can't eat, but freedom means that we have no rules. And freedom from food means that we can allow ourselves to not have this rigid thinking. Very similar, very, a very common experience of this would be, you know, oh, I'm, I'm not eating chocolate tonight. I can't, I'm on a diet, 
you know, I am, I'm not, I'm not eating chocolate. It's bad for me. I don't need it. I don't, I don't want it. Blah, whatever your reason is, I'm not going to have it. You know, somebody told me on TV that I shouldn't have chocolate or whatever. Somebody, my aunt told me I really should stop having chocolate. And what ends up happening is that we instead have popcorn. And then also it, that doesn't, that doesn't taste like chocolate. So then we have, you know, frozen yogurt or something. And then we're like, well, I'm still not having chocolate, but I, it didn't really fill what I was looking for. So then I ended up looking for like a healthy cookie and then I have that. And we're so fixated on the no of the no chocolate that we just keep going because we're really looking for something. Mm -hmm. And instead of following that whole, you know, pattern of like, I won't have this. So instead I'll have this and this and this and this and this, it just would have been much easier with food freedom and no rules. We don't have this chaotic relationship with food and eating the popcorn means I'm not eating the chocolate. Instead mm -hmm. it could just be, just eat the chocolate and move on with your life. Mm -hmm. All foods fit because they're all foods are not bad. They're inherently good. If they're making you feel good, if you're not allergic to them, mm -hmm. if you don't get sick from them, they're not hurting you. Essentially, your relationship is much more important than that. I have so many questions on this. I first of all, I love this, but then like, you know, what would you say to like, you know, the, there are common things that are demonized, you know, like aspartame. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like those things, like the diet Coke and the, you know. Right, um, right. So, like, do I, do I tell people to go out and like eat sugar all day? No, that's not what food freedom looks like. Okay. Because food freedom is so much more complex than that. But essentially what I do is help people trust their bodies enough to choose the right foods. Mm, okay, does, that's the missing piece here. Yeah. yeah. Like, does aspartame make you feel good? Right. If you never had a chance to ask that question, right. the question was always, I can't have it or I can have it. The question was never, how does it make you feel? Yeah. Then you can't make that decision for yourself. Instead, everybody just keeps making these decisions for you that you have no opportunity to even ask if that's something you want. So very often you'll say, well, you know, you have to have these exposures to food that you've sworn off for so many years to even give yourself a chance to see if it's good for you or not. And a lot of your work also is internal cues. Yes. Right? A lot of that work is like... Know your body. Know yourself. Yeah. Know your body. If you... And when somebody comes to you for any sort of treatment, they need to know what's really making them feel the way they're making them feel. The migraine is not the issue. Essentially, it's something deeper. Yes. Right? And that's uh, what you're looking and for. It's so, okay, so here's what I'm loving because I talk about this so much about focusing on the root cause of the problem, right? Yes. So the migraine is the symptom, but right, what's the root? Let's get to the root. And with food, it sounds like that's really what this philosophy is, Yes. is getting to the root. And a lot of the times for a lot of women, that root is going to be some sort of like self-hatred mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in some way, you know, some insecurity. And again, like fixing that root of like, how is the food making me feel, getting in touch with yourself and your body, that's going to fix those symptoms, whether the problem is, you know, an eating disorder, weight, you know. Exactly. But it really falls somewhere on that spectrum. Like, you know, the, and, and the danger of diet culture is that we, we feel like we're not good enough. So essentially what is the core issue is I am not going to be loved. I am not good enough. I'm not small enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not there and I'm not something enough. And therefore I need to go on this diet to make me enough. Right. And so, most likely you're not going to follow the diet and it's going to perpetuate your self-hatred. Yes. Yes. It's just a cycle that keeps going. No, I can't. I can't stop thinking about it. All I want to do is think about it. I'm going to give in. And now look at me. I can't. I'm a person who can't. And it's like, because the, there's this pattern that keeps on happening, you're only just proving to yourself, like, I can't change. Exactly. Right? 
And so you're so, teaching yourself this pattern too. Yes. Yes. Essentially, it's believing in yourself enough to become a person that that trusts their ability to make good choices. When there is somebody who feels that they can't make good choices because they have fallen off diets hundreds of times, then they don't have this trust. They don't feel that they are a person who can make good decisions. So they keep trying, looking to others for answers, but what's the core issue? The core issue is you are good enough. You are pretty enough. You are beautiful enough. It doesn't matter what your body looks like. You are deserving of health. And if you eat that pizza, let's pay attention to how you feel, not what you look like, because how you feel is more important. Because if you feel good after you ate that pizza, you're going to look good. If then you you're going to look good. good. <laughs> if you feel good, you're going to look good. Exactly. People, people who feel good look good to other people. Like when you feel good, you're attractive to other people. That is the core of attraction is somebody who is giving and yeah. not somebody who is searching for answers around. I'm sure people coming, stepping out of your office are glowing. They're probably like, oh, feel amazing. And you're That's like- Such a compliment. I hope that they do feel that way. But I'm sure. I, yeah, that is my goal is we call it like the Accu Glow. It's like, you should leave, and we say every treatment's a beauty treatment because yep. when you feel better and you're in less pain, you're more beautiful. You know, yes. pain makes you, it ages you, you know, ultimately. Yeah. Um, I saw you posted something on Instagram on this topic where I think it was around Thanksgiving and you mm -hmm. said like, instead of like hating the food, love the food, it was something like that. I think I even wrote it down. But you wrote, oh, what if this year you thanked the food for being so delicious instead of hated the food for being so delicious? Yeah, it's a very simple concept, but I think that um, is this very common in people I work with where they'll make the decision to eat something and then immediately there's regret and shame and self-hatred and self-deprecating um, like brain conversations that happen that I consider like, I call it like a, um, a playground bully. It mm -hmm. almost as if, if you heard the conversation of somebody to speaking to themselves internally, yeah. how could you? You're terrible. I can't believe you. You have no self-control. This is very diet culture also. Um, you're, you're a bad person for doing this. You know what you're going to do to yourself because you ate that? And all this bullying, internal bullying that happens immediately after eating food is so hard. And we just, we hate the food. And we, like you said, you don't feel good because you're just like emanating this, this hate to the food. Oh. Mm -hmm. Instead, you could just... I, I imagine it like as if you were to be put on trial after you ate every single thing you ever ate in your <laughs> whole life. And then somebody would be like, why did you eat that pizza? And if you could stand there and you could be like, because I wanted it and like move on. Right. There's so much more love for yourself, so much more love for the food. Take away the power of the food anyway. It has nothing to do with the pizza. It has everything to do with you. You can just be confident with all of your decisions always forever that's it's, you the feel goal. like um when people are like counting calories that's just a way to perpetuate this bullying yeah um count we took math class together didn't we <laughs> i think we were both in the lowest math. oh my gosh math uh, math class will forever be in our minds high school math oh my goodness um <laughs> there's there's no this this goes back to um, searching for outside, searching other people giving you solutions to your internal problems when essentially you're the only one that really can know what you need. So you know it's a whole person approach. Somebody comes in with a migraine, you're not going to just treat that. Somebody comes in with a thyroid issue, you're not just treating that. Somebody comes in with any other any other treatment that you're you're helping them with. It is a thousand factors in the body that right. have to contribute to this. This is hormones and every person's hormone balance is different. We have the medical piece that is very important, age, weight, family history, 7,000 things that are contributing to a person's weight that if we did calories in, calories out, first of all, I wouldn't have a job. Second of all, there would be 
there everybody would be the same size it's like so like arbitrary to me because you know food is medicine and so really the food should be you should be thinking of like nutritional value so like yes. yeah that avocado could be like more calories but it's like really healthy Quality. for your brain yeah. <laughs> absolutely it's called nutrient dense versus calorie dense love that yes and it's like wouldn't that make and it's funny because i see online people who are doing these diets like octavia and I, it like hurts my soul because it, it really crushes me because again, it's like, you're not eating actual food. And so you might lose the weight, but then of, of course you'll gain it back. But aside from gaining it back, cause it's not about the weight you're perpetuating, right? This, you know, self hate cycle. Yeah. yeah the cycle you, can't, of you can't, if you don't allow for there to be pleasurable food in your life, then there's never room for it but you continue living and there continue to be opportunities for pleasurable food. But with a diet or calories in, calories out, where, where's a glass of wine? Where's a birthday cake? Where does that exist? You know, I always, it's yeah. So it's such a harder life to live this constant. No living I in the constant. No, because, you know, life is so short and you have to enjoy it, you know? And so that's, I will always eat the birthday cake. Mind you, I'll eat like a cookie a day or a chocolate a day. <laughs> Same. But I eat like tons of fruits and vegetables too, and I'm good with it, you know? But I, I love like, you know, candy and junk food. Uh, you know, that's like my go-to. And so, and it's funny because there's some sort of shame involved in it, just being in my profession where it's a little embarrassing. Or like when we used to go in my school, everyone would eat lunch. And like the days I didn't have like a healthy lunch, I'd like eat by myself. Because <laughs> it was like, there was something like shameful or embarrassing, like, well, I'm, you know, a healthcare provider, like I should be eating the healthiest food. And, and the truth is, I really do try to like practice what I preach. But I also tell my patients like to eat and enjoy their life. And I had this recently, and I'm sure you were late. I had a patient who, um, you know, she had just had a baby. And she was telling me like, that she's already like on like her diet. And was like so stressed about losing the baby weight. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like, no, like, no, like, stop, please. Yeah. Like, like you need to be eating like really a lot of like nutrient dense food right now to support that baby, the milk supply to get back your energy. Like this is not appropriate. You know, yeah. this is not the time. And it's hard. I'm not. Thank you. Fan, Thank you. Know, <laughs> one mama at a time. I will tell them not to diet, but like you need to be eating food and if there's a time to indulge, it's now. Like rest, indulge. Like exactly. Yeah, I, I get so. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's it's really just for for me. It's more important nutrition and the the system that I work with is um, a three part system: nutrition, exercise, and wellness. Right. Um, exercise. The work of nutrition and the work of exercise are the work is trying to pay attention to the inside. So how does the food make me feel on the inside and, you know, gastrointestinally? Am I feeling high or low energy? Am I feeling hunger and fullness regularly? Am I waking up for meals and having breakfast? Am I having consistency with my food internally? What are the cues that my body is telling me nutritionally? The second thing I work with is exercise. And instead of focusing on external measurable goals of exercise, how fast you ran, how much you sweat, you know, you know, what, what the rate was of whatever, it's more important to pay attention to your heart rate and the inside and how it makes you feel, it gives you energy or not. And the last and most important thing is wellness and wellness. And I do bend to other practitioners for this type of thing. I say, you must get a therapist. You must get alternative treatment for certain things, acupuncture or whatever your body needs that I can't provide. That's one third of the picture. It's not a little bit of it. It's yeah. one third. Nutrition is one third. Exercise is one third. And wellness yeah. is one third. And you really need to look at all three of those things to be able to consider yourself healthy. And this is something that you definitely get as a healthcare provider. You, you just mentioned it's, it's three parts. We oh can't, you yeah. know, you can't do it all. We, no. we, we try and we understand it all, but we end up saying, well, you know, you need to sleep better yeah. and, you know, maybe you need some apps to help you sleep 
or maybe yeah. you need well, some sometimes I feel story. like I'm like a wellness like concierge service you know mm -hmm. because I definitely don't believe I'm the end all and be all and I think a lot of people need nutritional guidance or exercise guidance or and also I only treat people right if they're seeing a western physician too and so it's it's a team you know it's a team effort a and team. um yeah and I feel like oh, often I'm telling I'm just telling other people what services to get you know yeah I'm like let me um transfer you yeah. to that's what being holistic is that's Absolutely. that's being that's being a holistic practitioner that's having a holistic lifestyle is that recognition and so it's so important for patients to realize too it's like it's not one thing it's right one, it's absolutely you were just saying this is a holistic approach to yourself. Yeah. So weight loss, by the way, doesn't belong in nutrition goals or exercise goals ever. We should never eat to lose weight or exercise to lose weight. Weight loss is something that might happen on its own as a side effect and might contribute. Wow. But it doesn't belong there. I say sometimes weight changes are a side effect of our treatment you know, there's no up or down or anywhere, you know, sturdiness of the weight. weighing people on the scale, I'm guessing. Well, eating disorders are a little bit different. So okay, sometimes okay. that can be a blind weight. Um, I give the patient the choice to be weight or not. Um, I do provide meal plans for guidance, just if that patient needs a little bit of help to, you know, help pairing certain foods together. I do a lot of nutrition education. Um, teaching people about nutrition, just the basics of nutrition, but the holistic piece, like you were saying, the mom that needs to be there for her baby and have energy when she's not getting any sleep anyway, look at the whole picture. What is your wellness? What is that? What do you need for that? What, what's really distracting you from your nutrition or your exercise? What's what are the issues here as a whole person to be able to treat you? You know, some people come to me with low, uh, high cholesterol, let's say. This, the approach is, can be totally different. It mm -hmm. can be, you know, one person just needs a little more walking and one person needs a little more fiber and one person, you know, really does need some medication. So it really does depend on the person. Everybody is so different. Um, and generally, a nutritionist might give you a, a meal plan that can be very um, not specific to you. And sometimes that is a, a red flag. Same as if somebody came to you and was like, I want you to treat me like this. And you'd say, well, right. that, that's not how I think would help you. Yeah. Well, so the holistic piece is really important to be able to understand your approach to the food your need for the food in this moment do i need pizza i don't know let's consider the whole picture yeah. and like you were saying there's really always a place to add value and that's what i call it we can choose what we want we can have ice cream if we want it the candy like you said we're always adding value to our lives instead of subtracting mm -hmm. so we're we're back at math look at us so we're like <laughs> it's like instead of counting calories, let's add value. <laughs> Look I at love us. that adding value, taking away value, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's just keep it, keep adding good stuff. Have your ice cream, have some nuts on the side, you know. So if people here in Chicago <laughs> want to have your services, you do telehealth, right? So yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm gonna link at the bottom of this video all of your information. So people can find you and even just follow her on Instagram because it's such good content. Like it's such valuable content. Um, and then also like my last question is this, cause we're short for time, but um, if you could give us like one message about your philosophy or nutrition, I know this is a hard question, but like one thing you would really want people listening to this conversation to take away and leave this conversation with, what would that be? Um, I would say trust that you know yourself better than anyone. Um, that takes much more work than you would think because you are a combination of what everyone has always told you your whole life, mostly parents and people you love. So if you tap in to who you are and what you believe is right, trust that. And really trusting that will end up helping you um, have the nutrition that you need and valuing your body enough to love it enough to give it the things that make it do the best it can. 
because we always want to be the best we can. So feeding it the best food is like, you know, the best gas, what's it called? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know what it's else. called either. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot. Well, I don't know. I haven't driven in a while. Um, you want premium, you yeah. want premium nutrition because you deserve it and because you trust yourself to know what that means. Um, and that's really all that matters is really self-love. And if you figure out that there's really a core issue there that's pain or disruption, then take care of that. You know, that's that's part of trusting yourself, being able to listen um, yeah. to what you need. But you you can use a dietitian for that too. <laughs> I can help you find that. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much. This has been like really actually an inspiring conversation. Totally not even where I thought it would go. Like, but I feel like, again, like our philosophies align so beautifully together. Um, it was so easy to talk to you. You really <laughs> Well, I, I actually really um, gained a lot from this conversation. So I appreciate you sharing with us. And I hope we could do this again. I, I would love to talk to. more about, you know, like um, eating disorders and things like that. So absolutely. All right, Rifki. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye, Mom. Bye, Sahaba. Bye, Mom.